when we first got the bus, the uh, vent was leaking really badly, so we decided it would be one of the first things that we replaced. We decided to go with the Max Air Fan Deluxe, and here is how we installed it. What sort of cat are you dressed as today? No, I'm Bet Lynch. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Cheetah. Yeah, what do you reckon, cheetah? Cheetah. Well, I'm on top of the roof. Um, and anyone knows me will know I don't really like heights, so I'm kind of like laying down like I'm scaling Mount Everest or something, I don't know. But what am I up to up here? Basically, this roof vent here has seen much better days and um, I'm just removing the sealant from the roof, which is taking a lot longer than what I thought it would, uh, which is not great for me. So daylight and wind stop play and this was my makeshift cover. Oh yeah. Right, so here's the first hole. That's not my hole granted, but I'm gonna try and get this one out now. This is the old vent. So I've drilled all of the rivets out, removed all of the sealant I can. Let's see if it will push out. I can't believe how much sealant was on here. And the thing still actually managed to leak. Uh, tremendous, really. There we are. She is free, free as a bird. Very rusty. Show you what's going on here as I see it and what the plan is with this. Okay. This is the opening to the old roof hatch, so I'm gonna scrape all of that sealant off in a minute. I'm gonna have to remove all of this old sealant here. Tremendous amount of it, you can see how thick it is there, look. Um and then We'll see if the adapter fits to reduce this hole. I'm hoping it does, otherwise I've got a big hole in my bus and no way of filling it. Wish me luck. Thankfully, Lily was on hand with the camera and with drinks. Morning, my lovelies. Poor Rich is um, up there trying to get off all the sealant. The, it was still leaking, but... um. It had been sealed shut, but it was leaking anyway, so he's got the lovely job of trying to scrape it all off now. Bless him. The winning technique with this involved carefully using um, a heat gun on its lower setting and uh, one of those razor blade paint scrapers, which you usually use on a window to get like film and paint off of a window. Um, unfortunately, the ones that I had was plastic and I melted the first one. So there's a tip for you there. Either buy a metal one or be careful when you're using it because mine fell apart. It took absolutely ages to get all of this off, but the heat definitely made it a lot quicker. Um, before this, I was trying to use sort of some white spirits and chemicals type dealies to remove it and it just didn't touch it really. Um, so this is a top tip, use heat. Even with this much sealant, it still leaked, believe it or not. Tremendous! I'm making some adapters for the roof. As I mentioned before, the holes on the roof are about 460mm. I need to reduce them to 400 Um So I've got a scrap piece of steel that I've cut out of the bus here. And over here I've got the adapter that I've had made. Um, I'm, because the roof has a ridge in it, what I'm going to do is try and use this air flange tool that I've bought, very cheap, about 26 quid off uh, eBay, to make a ridge around the adapter plate, um, so it just sits a little bit more proud on the roof, and I've just done a couple of test holes here, it'll pump, it'll punch a 5mm hole in here if you want it to, uh, so I'm going to give that a whirl. Let's see how it sits on the roof. So I used the tool to go around the entire edge of the adapter 
taking my time on the corners because you just really need to go a little bit slower there to make sure you get the radius right. And then I, I etch primed it and painted it white. Um, I did that both sides, three really light coats. Just while the paint's drying on my adapters, I'm gonna have a quick look at why the side markers aren't lighting up at the back. Now I've used my multimeter to test this and there is a current running through that. Use the uh, multimeter to test the light on the outside and there is no current running around that. So what I'm gonna do is take this off and this back in here so I can get a good look at the wiring. What I'm hoping to find is that this plug is just been detached from the back here, but we shall see. I'll update you on that soon. This is a skylight I made out of a scrap piece of plastic to keep the rain out overnight. And then the next day I drilled some holes for the Max Air fan adapter in there. And Dave made this H-shaped frame, which is really important for our setup. What have you got there, Lil? Plyo grip. Good, plyo grip epoxy. So this stuff bonds metal to metal. Um, I'll put the link in the description. We use this to bond the, the panel to the roof. Yeah, we do. And it's on there nice and strong, isn't it? Yeah, stick. You ceiling stick. That's it, mastic ceiling strip like you would buy from any caravan um, sort of suppliers. So we put this around the frame in about three layers actually. Yeah, and then did. squashed it down, didn't we, Lil? Yeah. Make sure it was watertight. Yeah. So in between rainstorms, we managed to get on the roof and use the mastic to squash down the adapter to keep the rain out. And we use Sikaflex all the way around the adapter to just make a really good watertight seal. And this is the Max Air fan installed on the roof. So this is the frame inside. We've got the square in the middle and then we've got these longer pieces. And what we basically did was use the epoxy between the adapter plate and the roof. We clamped it up to this frame, first of all, for eight hours. So it was set solid. Then we sat the Max Air fan on top of three layers of that mastic tape that is used for caravans, screwed it through into this wooden frame so it was all nice and tight. And then we sealed it with the Sikaflex 521 which is weather resistant and UV resistant. So in the future, we'll tidy this up and obviously cover it over, but that's how it looks for now. We made the decision um, really early on to remove the floor for a number of re reasons, really. So the first one being not for me, but mainly for Kelly, um, that we wanted an extra height. And we, know, we knew that if we remove the floor, we're gonna gain 17 centimeters height. So that's the first reason. Another reason was we wanted to try and get some of the excess weight out so that, because obviously you need the extra weight for once you start putting the furniture and everything in. Um, so we know like loads of people just tear the floor up and we could kind of see why, because it's probably a lot quicker, but we made the decision to try and get it out in pieces so we could reuse it. And this is kind of how we went about it. And anybody that tells you getting the other one right up is easy, is a liar. Absolutely miserable. Managed to get this up today. We have to mainly Dave, but I got this one out. Uh, terrible. And then this long one along here. Dave's got most of them out. We're going to stop today though because I can't get under there with the grinder to get the ones out in the wheel arches because that's going to be the quickest route out because it's pouring down with rain. Uh, and I've had enough. This is just a replay of what we've just shown you, how we tried to do it. Um, and it's not the best way, but it's still good to see for hopefully anybody that wants to try and do this. So basically the drill speed was too high. We were burning through bits and we weren't using enough lubricant. Um, so the first day was pretty frustrating. Next day I tried to take some more out from underneath. Um, and bang them through which also wasn't great and didn't work very well so yeah we moved on to trying to drill them slowly i am going to split this clip 
because it's not that exciting to show you drilling but this is the speed that I had to begin drilling these high tensile bolts out so you can see that it's pretty slow um, I stop regularly to reapply the cutting oil to keep the drill bit cooler um, to prolong the life of the drill bit so first stage is to use on these um, bolts an 8 mil drill bit to drill a big hole in the top of the bolt and then move on to using a 5 mil drill bit to drill all the way down to where the bolt head meets the thread and at that point the bolt will just ping off and then you can bang it through the body of the uh, vehicle. I'm just going to split this and speed it up so you can just see that process through. So then when you come to the end of it, you drill through the thread and off pops the head and then you can bang it through. The Omen rail is finally out. Oh. So today Dave and I um, spent, I don't know, two, six and a half hours, maybe seven hours, uh, drilling out 111 um, high tensile bolts from the top and then banging through underneath. So it's raining at the moment, so I'm not going to tidy that out, but there's lots of pieces of metal under the bus, which is very satisfying. I'm just going to show you uh, what we've got up to. See over my left shoulder there, uh, the unwind rail, got most of that up in one piece, some of it in a few pieces, but that is just how it is. Um, but very satisfied that it's out. It doesn't look like much, but this is quite a victory. Next stage is to take the uh, plywood up and see what we're dealing with underneath. That's a job for another day. And the scrap bucket claimed a small amount of unwind rail, but not much. So I began ripping up the old safety flooring covering um, to reveal what was underneath, which was really quite a pleasant surprise. I've just taken out the first piece of plywood that's on the top um, and underneath we've got some really quite lovely phenolic plywood so we're hoping to be able to reuse this um, so what I'm going to do now is take all of the um, floor covering up and put it in bags so I can then take the top layer off uh, and see what we're up against underneath obviously we're going to have all of these holes that we're going to need to fill in somehow but I still think it's probably worth it uh, let me know what you think so this safety flooring is really tricky to get up in one big piece. So just score it in smaller sections and pull it up is my advice. Um, and then the floor underneath was in nice plywood sections, which I just lifted up um, and they came up nicely. The tonight plan under here is actually really good. So I think what we're going to do is fill all of these smaller holes, probably with some oversized dowels. And then make sure we um, seal that up to, to make sure it's waterproof. Underneath here is quite a subfloor, which is going to be the next task of getting that out. But I'm really pleased that this plywood, it might look a little bit wet, but it's not sodden at all, can be reused. It's going to save us a whole bunch of money, which it looks like we're going to need to have these wheel latches welded up. <laughs> There's a bit of a closer look at the wheel arches so you can see that they're pretty holy um, and we're going to have to have some work done on these we'll obviously be able to get a better look at that once the floor is up but it looks like those tops will need to be replaced at the very least and the same on the other side not ideal but you know that's how it is so we've got the top and the bottom floor out now stored in the garage this is the frame that is underneath that we'll be able to cut out um, and we got a double rainbow as well, which genuinely just put the ice on the cake. Okay, so this is the sort of superstructure that was um, 
well known by a coach company when they built the bus. So you can kind of see here that there's these rails that run from the front to back, so they're about five meters long. Galvanized steel. And then there's these ones here that run from um, side to side. Again, they're the same thickness and they're welded to the main structure of the body. So all we're gonna have to do is cut those up and grind them off of there and then remove that structure. So that's, that's gonna be a big job, uh, but well worth doing. What it will give us is um, all of this height from here to here down to here. So that's where the new floor will sit. Hopefully the old floor, I should say, will sit back on there. Um, and we'll remove all of this weight from the bus, which means we've got, you know, a lot more to put back in, should we need it. So this reciprocating saw, I bought specifically to help me remove the frame of the floor. Um, I bought some really good Bosch blades and some cheaper blades off of eBay that were shorter. The difference was sort of night and day with these, so I would recommend them. And then we used an angle grinder to remove those wells that I just showed you in that video. Buy these in bulk because you do go through them quite quickly, but it is the easiest way to kind of grind through them. So that's how, that's the tools that we used to remove the floor. Using the reciprocating saw, I chopped away all of the beams from front to back in the bus, then from side to side, um, and used the angle grinder to remove the welds. Okay, so at the front here, I've got both the uh, sort of horizontal and vertical, if you think of it like that, even though they're all horizontal brackets out all the way along. And then these ones here, I've cut the long ones out. And at the back, Dave and I have managed to grind, uh, angle grind out all of the brackets up to this point here. So tomorrow, it will be taking this one out, and this one out, and this one out and this little bit out and then we'll be left with just the original chassis rails this morning uh, we're gonna cut out the rest of the uh, beams that are inside and let me give it a good clean out i'm going to show you why walking down the bus some nuts and bolts to pick up here i'm picking them up for days i'm banging out around the back let me show you what almost 20 years of dirt looks like. Okay. Okay. That was open, people. I already had a look and see at this yesterday, but in this U channel down here. Yes. And it's like that in all of the U channels all the way down, especially the ones around the wheel arches. Um, so I'm going to give all that a good clean out today, so I'm going to give it a sweep out and blow it out with the air gun and then once the rest of those brackets are out it'll be time to clean the chassis down for a good paint up. Hopefully it's not too bad. There's something really oddly satisfying about this, so obviously I've spent the clip up here, but the sheer amount of dirt that came out of the chassis rails was just absurd i mean it's it lucky that this was just all really dry and could come out like quite easily um, i could imagine that that hasn't always been the case which explains why there's rust in and around here i got seven of these full out of the bus which is just absurd this air gun is just fantastic for cleaning up and um, dusting down so my, i messed up when i use this because as you can see it just blows all of the crud out of all of the nooks and crannies um, and did actually manage to remove and blast some holes in the rusty areas of the chassis here so a blessing and a curse perhaps because well you can see that a big hole was just made there um, and we really are going to have to work quite hard to replace these which is what we're going to hope to be able to show you in um, one of our next videos if not the next one the one after so yeah Get an air gun, really useful. This is what the main bus rails look like. So we've managed to gain 17 centimeters height there um, and lost a lot of weight, which you can see in our scrap pile here. 
off to go to the scrap yard, but not the scrap buckets. We're all finished up for the day. I uh, even swept up and then I thought, I know, I'll take that scrap bucket and put it somewhere safe, out the way. Oh, and it broke and went all over the floor. And that brings us to the end of the video. So as always, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you've got any comments and tips, then please let us know below. Like and subscribe. And we're just going to have a quick look at what's coming up next. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. In our next video, we're going to show you our brand new seats and how we clean back the chassis rail using a needle gun and some other air tools. Um, so please check back in for that. We also had a start on some of the other mechanical issues that the bus has. So we're going to show you how we tackle those things, as well as how we've started to cut back the wheel arches for the welder. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe.